Hi everybody, Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. You can already guess what it is. It is a Rubik's Cube gift box. Um, I love this, it's been really, really fun to make. Looking through my camera, oops, lock that down there. Looking through my camera, the colours are actually different. Well, then they are the colours you see, but in terms of like the tone of them, this is a really strong orange. Yeah, it's almost, I don't know, looking a bit more peachy. Again, this is really vibrant red. That's That looks mustard, but it's not. It's a really bright yellow. So hopefully in the photos at the beginning, you would have seen more of the true colours and more of the authentic Rubik's Cube colours, should I say. Um, but it's really good. So it's a three and a half by three and a half by three and a half box. Lift up the top here and you've just got a nice gift box. But I thought how great these would look. I'm going to keep this in my craft room for storage because I just loved it so much. Um, but they would look wonderful at any kids party. A really bright, wacky, colourful party. And these would be lovely as favours. And you could put, you know, a little sentiment on there or personalise them. You know, I think they're really fun. If you did want to change them, you could do one in all pink tones. You could do all blue tones, um, etc. And they'd still look wonderful. So that's what we're going to do. Now, the idea for this come from this one. Now this is a real Rubik's Cube and I have this in my craft room and it works. Play around with it Ooh, once it all lines up. Um, and as you can see, they are pretty much spot on. So this is a giant one that my husband won for me when we were dating. So as random as that is, it's got a bit of sentimental um, nostalgia um, value on it, I guess. Um, it was from one of those uh, seaside amusement arcades and um, we won loads and loads of tickets and um, you get to choose the prizes and we saw this giant Rubik's Cube and we both uh, both said both pointed at the same thing so yeah so that's what it is so I've had it for a long time and um, yeah it's inspired me to make this really fun gift box so let's crack on and make them so I've got here I've prepared everything apart from um, one lot of the squares because I'll go through and show you those again my um, lighting it all went really funny then I don't know what's going on let's move them out of the window because maybe they're affecting there we go okay so I have already cut so basically you have six sides on the box now where's my lid so the lid's here I've also done the base just because I wanted it to look as real you know realistic as possible if you don't want to do the bottom then you just need five colors and you need nine squares of each of those colors so I'm doing the base again so I've already got five colors here and I'm going to show you the sixth one um, but it's five colors and nine of each and each of these squares are one inch and I use my one inch punch so it is a quick project if you've got a punch if you don't have a punch then you will need to do one inch strips on your trimmer or with your ruler and scissors and then cut them again every one inch so you get your squares so that's what I've done for this one here so I've already got my so for the authentic Rubik's Cube colors you need white so I've got nine white I've got nine red nine of this kind of like really really vibrant blue someone asked me if I match my nail color to my projects and the answer is no however today I feel I have as well with that um that aqua color um and then I've got so yeah so it's yellow sorry uh white red blue green and orange and then yellow so I have got the yellow here and I use these um, stick to anything to the company or stick to and it's the A4 double sided tape sheets I always use these ones I'll share all the links in my blog but what I've got is I've got some of the yellow here and then with some of the backing I found it so much easier to create all of these are stickers basically so you could run it through your Siron machine if any of you have them so I know they're popular um, but I just found it much easier than gluing each one and you always get a bit of glue that splodges over the side and you can end up just getting them in, in a bit of a sticky mess when you're doing such a, a mass amount of of squares so I just find much much easier so if you prep your card before you put it through your punch um, or cut it so even if you don't have a punch and you're using your trimmer just, you've got double-sided tape so just peel off the backing on one side so this is the sticky side now and I'm just going to I don't even need all of that so I'd say half of that 
I can get nine squares out of that. And then I just, again, I don't like to waste any of this stuff because it's it's not expensive, expensive, but you don't get a lot of sheets in each pack. So pop it over, put that back down again, and then just cutting slightly on the card, just so you don't get your scissors all um, sticky. Just cut around that. That top piece comes off, but now on the other side, I've got that now sticky. So when I punch this side, I can peel off that backing and I've got stickers. So that's that done. And then if I just grab this punch, this is just a stamping up one inch punch, but you can buy lots of, um, it doesn't have to be stamping up. There's many other brands that do one inch punches. I found the one inch ones worked best on this because it's a three and a half by three and a half by three and a half. Um, the gaps that you get in between, although I've gone a bit wonky with my gaps on that one there, but you get the right the right gaps um, because it's three and a half, so that half inch that you've got gives you the right amount of gaps. So now I can just go over this and literally cut out nine. And like I said, now I just peel that backing off and I've got my stickers ready to go. So it's just doing it this way will make life much quicker quicker and easier. Like I said, if you're doing multiple, if you think now, oh, I really like this idea, I want to make these for my child's birthday, by having a punch, it's going to make it much, much quicker. So I just want to use that middle bit there. Pop that in the middle. So now I've got my nine squares. So you just saw how quickly that is. I've got very little waste, mm -hmm. so I can get rid of that now. And that's all done. So I've got my six colours nine of each okay again all that will be listed in my blog now onto the actual box itself you just need two pieces i've used my a4 um uh black card this is um it's about i'd say it's about 300 gsm it's a really really strong one maybe 260 260 to 300 it's a, it's a good quality one but any good card that you know you've made boxes or gift bags from will work okay so these are seven and a half by 11 okay so if you're um, using letter paper yours will already be 11 long you'll just need to bring in the side here to seven and a half and again if you're using a a4 paper um, like I said you just need to bring it down to seven and a half by 11 then scoring so we'll do this one first scoring along the seven and a half inch side you want to score it three and a half and seven then rotate it so you've got that little half inch tab here on the right hand side. You want to score again at three and a half and seven and ten and a half. Okay, repeat that so you've got two pieces like so. Now I have just oiled my hands with my cuticle oil and I can see it coming off on my card but it's all going to be covered so I'm not worried but I just noticed now in my camera you see all these like hand prints. So never mind. Trust me to use the black on the day that I done that. So it's obviously not absorbed, although it feels like it's absorbed in, it's obviously still on top. Um, okay, so that is all the scoring done. And then we can do um, some burnishing. So just fold all of these and burnish all of your score lines. Okay, so that's all of my score lines burnished. So now what you want to do, so you'll have a half inch tab on the right hand side and you'll have a half inch tab on the top here. So th this is gonna be the top of our box. These are the bases. So with your scissors, you wanna cut up very neatly. You wanna remove, so I'm cutting kind of like off to the right hand side of that score line here and then over to the left. So I'm just removing that bulky bit of the score line. This has just stopped me having any overhangs. You can see there, just got rid of that bit. Then again, you want to cut up this one. So I'm cutting to the left now, so that whole score line is being cut away. It's on this piece here. And then rotate it and just slightly on an angle, so you're just creating a little notch there, cut that piece off. Then go up to this one again on an angle, cut up to that first score line so we're just going to remove this whole piece and then rotate it cut all the way down again cutting out that score line like so okay so we've just got this tab here left then with this top one now you can just cut right the way down and we'll do the other bits to that in a minute 
Okay, so back around there now, so you should have these two free, this single little tab, and then two three and a half by three and a half squares at the bottom. Repeat that so you've got exactly the same on this piece here. Okay, so that's my two pieces, that's what you should now have. So I'll just hold that there just so you can see. You can see the little bit I've cut out there, so you should have a little gap, just so you don't get any overhang on your base. And then these two here are free, and these two tabs here. Okay, so now we can get these all glued together. So I've just got my wet glue here, and you just want to put some glue on this tab here first. Okay. And then making sure you've got all of the, you know, the same piece, so the tabs should be um, all at the top here together, and it should be the flat side. You don't want to be sticking this tab on top. Um, I know some of you might think, well, of course I'm not going to do that, but I'm always cautious that there's new people watching my channel, so um, those of you that maybe have never made a box before, you might not know. So these are basically the pieces that will attach our box together. So that's that one. And flip it over. And again, you now want to put glue on this one. Like so. And then fold this one over and then fold this over and they should all join perfectly. And you want to make sure that all your score lines are all matched up and you get a perfect join like so. Okay, so just give that a few seconds to dry. Okay, so that is now all stuck together. So these pieces at the bottom here, these full three and a half by three and a half squares will all be the base. So just kind of roughly pop them. We'll decide actually which way, which one, which side you want to be your front. So I'm gonna go with this side here. So the two side pieces would go in first, then the back, then the front. We'll deal all with that in a minute because I'm not actually gonna stick this one together. I want to keep this one flat pack so I can travel with it because I've got this one for my craft room, I don't need two, so this one I'm going to use to keep as a gift. So with this being my front, this one here we want to remove completely. So I'm just going to turn it back on its side, open up all of this, okay, and then I can just take out very neatly that whole front one like so okay so again this is my front of my base the two side ones going the back then this one now these two here are going to be the side pieces don't worry about this powder here I've just put my anti-static buddy on there just to get rid of some sticky glue I had inside that will wipe off in a minute so what you want to do with these ones is cut down about let me just grab my ruler so this piece measures um, four and a half. Um, yeah, three and a half. No, four. Where am I getting four and a half from? Measures four. I would cut one and a half inches off. So I'm going to cut in about here. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be precise with this. But about one and a half, like so. So I'm just removing that. Again on this side, about one and a half. It's about there like so okay so those two are going to go over like that and then this piece is going to be folding and it's going to slit sit in here but what you want to do so on one of these side pieces here is just take a tiny little sliver not a lot just enough to be able to allow the um the little kind of tab or the little lip of the lid to slot in so that's that one and then again like so you can see it's just a tiny little piece that I'm taking off okay so that's going to go like that and can you see now we've got a bit of a gap here that means that this will slot in so again you don't want to take off a lot but you want to just take a little notch off the corners and don't do a lot if you do too much your lid won't stay in it will actually keep popping out so again make sure it's all burnished and now you can just slide in the front and you want it to be snug because you want it to stay locked in. So now that fits in there perfectly. And there's my cube. Okay. Like I said, I'm not sticking down my base. 
but if you are going to stick it down these are my side ones so if you put that one down put glue on here then stick that one down then put glue on here which is the back and then put glue on the front and stick it down it just means you get that continuous fold all the way around the front of your box so it just looks more neater and finished and then like I said you can open up like so so I'm gonna rub that off in a second if you do use black card and you use your anti-static buddy because I got some glue splodged inside so just rub that over if you get a very very damp cloth really damp like almost dry just wipe over it and it'll get rid of that okay so now that's ready to decorate now the reason I've done it like this first is so that you know what squares that you're going to be decorating on so you can either decorate it as its whole or take it apart like so remembering which one is going to be shown on top of the bottom of your uh, cube that's if you're going to use it I'm going to um, put a cross on all of the ones that I know are going to be hidden apart from that front one now I can put the whole thing flat and I can decorate all of this while it's all nice and flat okay so it's entirely up to you if you want to do it as a cube together now it's entirely up to you how you want to decorate because like an Rubik's cube it's got all different squares all different colors all over the place so you can see here there is no pattern I've just literally just stuck them wherever I want so you don't want to be left with a load of the same color when you get to the end because obviously you've got six sides to decorate so I would just say maybe you know just like I said, there is no real kind of rule. So let me just start off and show you the kind of process I've done it. So peel off the backing. So I've got these little stickers now. And I'm going to start with my front here. So you want to find your middle spot. So let me just put that piece there. Um, so the middle of your square. I done my, I eyeballed mine. Okay, so um, if you... Don't feel confident that you're going to get them all perfectly matched up. So you've got three and a half here. So the halfway point is one and a quarter. So put a very light pencil mark at one and a quarter. Okay. And then again on this side here. One, <clears throat> sorry, one and three quarters. Which is what I've marked. I don't know why I'm saying one and a quarter. One and three quarters is half of three and a half. Then if you just do a pencil all the way through... So you're just creating a very light cross. Okay, you can see there what I've done. Again, you can rub all of this out. You've now got somewhere where you can kind of use as a gauge so that you know where you're sticking them. So this one here, always start with the middle. So I'm going to start with the middle one here and make sure that this is sitting equally over this line here. And bring it down by about one eighth of an inch and stick that one down like so. Then I'm going to grab a white one and then with this one here you want to make sure you've got the same equal gap between and off and at the end of this square and at the top like so. We'll just bring that up now. Okay then I'm going to use um, I'm going to use another red. So again I'm going to put this one in the middle so I, I know my middle point there. I'm just going to again same equal gap pop that one there and then I'm going to use a yellow and put that one down the bottom use this orange one again come over to this side now nice turquoise color I go there you can see it's much much easier now to line up and because um, I've got that kind of cross that I've created you know that you are getting them all the same and then let's do let's do another white one and um, do another orange like so. So that is one side already done now. So that's the front of my box. So again, I'll just pop in the sides there. Pop all this down, and you can see the side there coming together. So I'm now going to going to go along and stick all my squares on all of these five other sides. And I'll be back with the finished box. Okay guys, so there is the finished box. So like I said, I'm keeping mine flat for now because I'm going to be um, using it later. Um, so yeah, 
you know, as I showed you before, if you want to do the same and keep it flat. Otherwise, yours will be all stuck down now and it will look like this. So again, there's the two side pieces and then that fits down nicely inside there, making it a nice snug little fit. And again, really nice to personalise. The colours are annoying me though on this video because it's a lot more vibrant than they look. So um, again, just uh, revert to the pictures and you'll get a much, much true um, uh, colour. So there you have it. So there's my two super fun boxes or storage as I'm going to be using this one for. And this one is going to be given to someone as a gift. And there is the inspiration, the real Rubik's Cube, which you can just about make out but I think it's a pretty good match so there you have it so I hope you enjoy this fun uh, tutorial from me today as always please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today and subscribe to the channel to see more thanks for watching bye